Morning all, let's have a look at the other Blitz game which actually could be the first one played in 2006 between Vichy Anand and Magnus Carlsen. Vichy Anand was playing white, so we'll take from Black's perspective, Magnus's perspective, e4. It's actually a five minute time control without any increment at all. Uh, a lot of the modern GM Blitz tournaments have increment, but I believe in this Glitz in Blitz, no increment at all, just five minutes each. So e5 from Magnus, bishop c4, a little bit of a surprise, the most common move is knight f3. Knight f6, d3, very solid from Vichy. Knight c6, knight f3, bishop e7, all standard stuff, putting the bishop on e7 here. White castles, black castles, rook e1. It puts pressure indirectly on the e5 to discourage any d5s here. d6. A4, maybe knight A5 was a concern. The bishop can now be tucked on A2 on any knight A5s. Bishop E6, inviting double pawns, which will give black some pressure along the F file. Knight C3 from Vichy in return, not minding double pawns. This will give white good control over that D5 square. Pressure on that D file and also potential for C5 at the right moment to undermine black's pawn chain. So it's not so clear cut to take on e6 right now in any case. We see Magnus playing queen d7 here. And let's put on the kibitzer at this point. a5, there's a positional threat actually of a6 to try and weaken a little bit black's light square control. a6 is played to stop perhaps a6 from white. h3, rook f e8. And now Vichy plays knight g5. So where can this bishop go? It actually now takes on c4. Okay, it gives white good grip over that d5 square. Bit of a bind here. We see knight d4 though, exploiting the fact that the knight's left f3, not controlling d4 anymore. Vichy now plays knight f3. And so we get this exchange of knights. Knight takes, queen takes. And now queen e6 attacking c4, that's protected. And there's a positional threat from white of bishop g5 taking on f6 just to undermine further black's d5 control. A knight coming to d5 could be a menace. We see h6 stopping bishop g5. Bishop e3, as though c5 in the future might be a concern. Knight d7, increasing a grip over the c5 square, but also now potentially a dark square bishop exchange to try and weaken white on the dark squares. A lot of the pawns here are on light squares, so if the dark squares can be weakened, that might help black. Rook e d1. Bishop g5 is played now. Knight d5, threatening knight takes c7, forking queen and two rooks. So that has to be protected somehow. We see actually rook a c8 still inviting the bishop g5 another alternative here to protect c7 was bishop d8 but uh, Magnus really is keen on getting these dark square bishops off we see bishop takes g5 h takes g okay it's double pawns but um, white's dark squares have been weakened here queen g3 attacking g5 that's protected now queen g4 a bit of a sneaky move here. A natural move like knight f6 can fail disaster disastrously in this position with two different moves. Either queen takes c8 spectacularly because of knight e7 check, that's winning the exchange, or just simply knight e7 check, just winning the exchange, forcing rook takes e7 because it's forking. Queen and King. So Magnus is careful not to fall for that. Rook e6 is played. And then we see a rook cliff, rook d3, aiming to put pressure on g5 soon. King f8 is played here. A very interesting move. King f8, getting out of the way of some potential problems on that g file. Rook g3. 
and also sidestepping the knight e7 check resources. The king was a bit of a liability there. And with the king on f8 now, knight f6 is far more possible. If it had been on g8, then knight e7 check would have still been that kind of cheapo tactic to win the exchange. So here, knight f6 is possible. Knight takes f6, g takes, double pawns again, capturing towards the center. We see h4. Now, if black played in this position, g takes h4, then queen takes h4 is very strong. It's attacking the queen and it's threatening queen h8, winning the rook here. So this is actually a terrible position for black. This would be completely lost. So Magnus is forced after h4 to do something else. He accepts an outside pass pawn from white by playing king e7. He's ready though to put pressure on that outside pass pawn if h5 is played. h5 is played, queen h7. Keeping an eye on e4, b4, as though c5 might be a concern for black. Rook h8, that's protected. Rook a, a3 to c3 is a potential maneuver for, for white here for c5 if black doesn't do anything. But here Magnus breaks out of the position a little bit. He frees his pieces a little bit energetically with a pawn sacrifice f5 and it's a pawn sacrifice with check even. Let's examine some possibilities here. If e takes f5 then rook f6 and Magnus is going to be okay here according to engines. Very okay in this position. This kind of position offers white uh, only a disadvantage. There's weak pawns etc. So a very interesting pawn sacrifice if it's taken with e takes uh, then rook f6 seems sufficient here. And if queen takes then we can just take here and in this position apparently there's a very very good move in this position in this variation not to move the rook because then g4 so Magnus must have seen this, but instead in this position g4 from black and this is nice for black if for example takes takes black is doing fine here. He has the undermining move f5 in this position and this is breaking up all of white's pawns and actually black's going to end up better. So very very energetic idea this pawn sacrifice played in this five minute game here this f5. Fantastic idea in the circumstance. But we're left with this other possibility which is played. Queen takes g5 check, which is sidestep those variations. Rook f6, and we see now just rook e1, offering a kind of counter pawn sacrifice, letting black take on e4, which Magnus does, but it does also give this f5 square for use. Queen h4, queen f5. And Magnus at the moment is back in the game. In fact, if we just rewind there for a moment, perhaps White could have played something else here, like bringing the, the rook in to just keep control of that f5 square, maybe just taking on f5 and taking on e4. So Magnus for the moment got back in the game here after this queen h4, but it's dangerous still for Black. There's this nasty pin. How does he deal with this? What is white actually threatening? Well, rook takes e4 is on the cards now. Magnus plays queen f5. And there's a potential threat now of rook takes h h5 to deflect the queen away from f2 or e4. If rook takes e4, let's have a quick look at rook takes e4. In this position, rook takes h5. So that's very nice for black in fact. Uh, there's a problem either on f2 or e4 here. So black's fine. For example, takes, takes, queen takes, we can take on f2. Black's doing fine. So for the moment, uh, after queen f5, we see actually the move rook e2, taking away this rook h5 threat. Now another energetic 
pawn move from Magnus. Very energetic indeed. E3. So if this is taken with the F pawn, then that's losing a whole rook for white. Queen F1 check wins the rook very safely. So Vichy takes with the E rook. If he took with the other rook here again, this this is problematic for rook takes H5. So very precise moves in these each time for a five minute game. That's quite a hard task. We see now queen takes c2, and it looks as though c4 might be a problem in some lines. Rook e f3 using that pin, putting pressure on f6, and now actually, it seems White's got a big advantage here technically from the engine perspective. Something has gone wrong in this continuation. In fact, let's just rewind here. To keep the advantage minimal, queen f4 apparently was needed just to try and get the queens off. But Mamang is playing queen takes c2. This is actually quite nasty now, this position. The f5 square has been taken away from the queen. Nasty pin here. We see check, king h3, and the queen coming back. But now g4 threatens g5. Queen g7. White is significantly better. g5. Rook takes f3. Rook takes f3. How can Magnus survive this position? King e8, getting out of the discovered checks. King g3, queen h7. h6, might squeezing here on the king side. Queen b1, as though there might be a perpetual threat check, or even worse, queen g with queen g1 check. The king steps back for the moment. Queen g6. The blockade now is lifted with rook f6, kicking the queen out of g6. Queen d3, and here technically there's a knockout blow in this position, which was actually missed. Vichy Anand played queen g4, which looks good to get onto c8. But there's something even more crushing here, is actually the move g6 first. g6 first weakens Black's control of the e6 square, which means actually, well, if it's left, g takes f7, so if it's taken. Queen g4 is actually crushing in this position. There's no defense against queen c8. No reasonable defense. If king e7, we can use the e6 square. Like check and just rook f7. Check king g3 and black's run out of checks and has to give up the queen or, or something with queen f4 check. It's hopeless. But uh, Vichy Anna missed this opportunity. It's only a five minute game though. Accuracy. Is very hard in five minute game with the limited time constraints. So we see this queen g4, a second best move instead, which allows actually king e7, and note this f7 pawn guarding e6 crucially. And now queen f3 attacking f7, but now queen takes c4 protecting f7. Mangus has minimized the damage. He's only slightly worse now. He was critically worse, and now he's only slightly worse. King g3, rook g8, rook f5, queen e6, king h4, king venturing up, queen g6, queen g4, queen e6, rook f6, inviting an exchange of queens. Perhaps Magnus could have refused that with queen d5 or queen b3, but he takes the queen off. King takes. Now d5, using his own passed pawn here. King f5. And Vichy must have been very short of time because after d4, in fact, this is the end of the game. Vichy Anna must have overstepped the time limit. So some very dramatic moments in this game indeed. White is actually better in the final position technically. With h7, for example, rook h8, rook h6. It looks scary to allow this d pawn, but here g6 is quicker, it seems, than the d pawn. If, for example, d2, then rook h1. And here it's hopeless. If takes, takes, we're going to play king g7 soon. So this is, this is hopeless. But uh, 
you know, Vichy overstepped the time limit in this very dramatic five minute game. And this is actually, I believe, the first ever actual loss of Vichy Anand against Magnus Carlsen. It was only a five minute game though, back in 2006. The Reykjavik Blitz. Comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.